Uh, this is going to be a tutorial about the skills building workshop that we're doing at school. Uh, we're trying to make this not about um, packaging or bottle design or anything like that. So we're trying to use a more uh, generic shape. So we picked this piggy bank. It's kind of a universal thing. It's not a package. And everybody knows what a piggy bank is. So uh, the skills we're working on is um, working with foam core and cardboard. So using an X-Acto knife, uh, gluing, perfing, curving, and creating this shape. So we have this nice clean geometry and we're gonna make this out of foam core and cardboard. So there are several skills that we're gonna be working on here. You know, the cutting and some sanding and piecing this together and the gluing, and we're using tape as a clamp. So I was gonna go through the exercise, uh, basically exactly how we're gonna do at the workshop. So this is the object that we are going to build and the kit that we're providing, everybody gets a little kit. It's gonna come in a brown paper bag like this. And we have some of the parts pre-cut. So we can move this process along quickly. So uh, everybody will get um, the directions, step-by-step -step directions on how this is gonna work. So in the uh, workshop, I am gonna go through each one of these steps one by one and show everybody how to, uh, how to make the part and then they're gonna cut it out themselves and glue this together. So at the conclusion, we should be able to assemble this entire part. All right, so we'll have this handy. So I'm gonna follow that. I'll put that off to the side. And then the uh, stuff you'll need to bring, we're gonna bring uh, glue. Uh, we have um, masking tape, uh, X-Acto blade, uh, all the cardboard pieces, I'm going to provide that. Uh, it's also a good idea to have a triangle, straight edge. Uh, sometimes I use the triangle to square things up, so it's always a good idea to have a triangle handy. And I believe that's all the parts we specified. I am going to provide this little sanding tool. Uh, it's just a mailing tube with some sandpaper stuck on it. It has two different grits. We have a 150 and an 80. And then I have a, a sanding block inside with some sandpaper that we can use to sand some of the edges. So we'll use that, but I'm going to provide that in the uh, workshop. So we have uh, several pieces here, and I have the um, actual uh, layouts and dies and everything on the pieces here, so we can uh, work on that. We are gonna include this piece here, this small piece here, that has you know a disc and like one of the ear shapes, and this is going to be a practice run, because we are gonna do partial cuts, like a perf cut. We're gonna cut through all these lines halfway through the material. And that takes a little bit of a feel, a sensitive feel to, to do that. So we're gonna use this as a practice piece. So if you cut all the way through or you make a mistake, that's okay. Uh, and you wanna ruin our good part. So I'm not gonna do the practice part now, but during the tutorial, we will do that. So we have these pieces we're gonna cut out. <clears throat> and we have the, uh, one of these I have already cut. This is the sides. And we're gonna do the partial cuts here. So this one I did already, so we can see, this will come in the kit all cut, so everybody can see how this is going to work. So with these partial cuts, we can get a nice nice curve here, we glue that together. So we don't want to bend this too much and create a fold. We want this to be a nice, beautiful surface so it's really clean. And we're gonna hold that with the formers on the inside. Okay, so the first part we're gonna do is we're gonna do the partial cuts and get this uh, ready to go. So this will be after we do the practice, we'll do the partial cuts. <clears throat> so like I had mentioned, the partial cuts are gonna go halfway through. I like to cut these partial cuts first and then cut the profile afterwards. because so I like to run the cut off the part. I don't wanna start right on the part because I might go a little too far or not far enough. So I kinda wanna get a feel for it and then make my run all the way through. So I think everybody will develop their own way to do this. So we'll see how that works. Uh, so the partial cuts, like I mentioned, we're only gonna go uh, partially through, let's say about halfway. So basically we need to cut through the top piece of paper and into the foam a little bit and not through the other side. So this takes a little bit of a feel. So using this blade, I like to hold it back, hold it like a um, pen, pencil or a pen, keep that blade straight up. We wanna keep our, our blade straight up in the air. We don't lean it to one side or the other and apply even pressure and no forcing. It should go like butter. If you find yourself forcing or shaking like that, take a moment. Something's not right. You have to relax. I usually work standing up. I like looking down on the work. Um, I, I have trouble looking sideways. It's hard to judge keeping this blade straight up and down. So I do a thing called what I call like a plunge cut. I kind of 
push into the material. So I just pushed in here and get a feel for where I am. And I use my other fingers here to ride. It's kind of like a, I don't do it in midair. I sort of get this stable. It's like almost locking my hand into position so I can make this pass. So I'm gonna push that in there and I'm gonna pull, I'm pulling hard backwards, not down. I'm just gonna do that once. So what I kind of do is I push the blade in, get my triangle to line up or my straight edge. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna start the cut outside of the profile of the part. And I'm pushing back pretty hard, trying to keep the consistency of that blade into the material. And then once you get a feel for it, it can go a little quicker. But already I can see it's flexing nicely. And I didn't go through to the other side anywhere. So if it starts to go through even a little bit, as soon as we put this into tension, it's gonna to start to split. So it's a good idea to make sure we don't do that anywhere. So now I'm gonna cut the profile out. Now it's freehand cutting on these curves. Most important is to keep the blade straight up and then try not to angle it like this. So you'll get a bevel cut, which can interfere with some of our glue joints. So this is a little hard. I keep my arm up. I try not to get my wrist to crank in a corner like this so I get jammed up. I just sort of want to relax. So what I'm going to try to do is I'll make my curve cuts like this, but then I'll move the material. So my hand is always, I try to use like a muscle memory to keep my hand up in this position and come around nice and easy. And I'm sort of using my elbow and trying to keep my arm nice and straight. Again, this takes some practice. So I'm gonna do a plunge cut. I'm gonna go past my line slightly. Because right now I'm going all the way through, so I'm not worried about going too far. But I do like to take a couple of passes. I don't wanna to try to do the cut all in one shot because I end up forcing it and start tearing the material. So the idea is to keep this straight up in, in the air and make that blade go right in the black line. Take your time at first until you get a feel for it. So I'm a little off there, so I'm gonna slow down. And I'm just pulling back. I'm not pushing down too much. I just want to kind of cut through a little bit. So here I'm trying to keep that blade straight up. I'm just going to turn the material. And keep that moving in that direction. So I kind of like to do these. I'm going to do this curve cut all the way through. And then I'll do the other curve cut. It's kind of a preference. So now I'm pushing all the way through. This is eighth inch foam core, so it's relatively thin. So in most situations, all right, so I'm looking at that, not bad. It's pretty straight up, looks pretty good. So I'm going to cut these little flats at the bottom right now. Just gonna cut that right off. So when I do the next curve cut, this piece should come right out. So I'm going to start this curve cut right here, pushing it in, and I'm going to drag back nice and easy. Try to stay on that line as much as possible. So I did a negative curve, I'm going right into a positive curve, and I'm just turning the material. right to there. So that's halfway through. So now I know I'm going to go all the way through. So since I've created a little bit of a path by going through that first layer of the paper, I can use that almost as a guide within reason because the, the blade will go out of that path quickly because it is only paper and foam. But you can kind of use that as a little bit of a guide. Okay, there's a couple little spots here. I didn't press hard enough. Don't want to tear those. I always want to cut those so it stays nice and clean. You start tearing it, you can rip the 
good surface of the board. Okay, that should do it. Oh, a little more here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to look at my edge, nice and square. Now we don't want to bend the other direction. We want to put the perfs on the inside. I know that's a little counterintuitive. Kind of old school was to do the perfs on the outside. It makes more sense. It's like a perf cut and you bend the other way, but you get all these lines. It's kind of distracting. I like to keep my parts really, really clean. So you almost don't know that it's made out of cardboard because they're really smooth surfaces. Okay, so that's, that looks really good right there. So we need a pencil. So you see I have the center line here. There's gonna be a former in here. It's gonna be glued. So I want to know that information. So I'm going to just make a little tick mark here at the end. And this center perf is on center, but I'm gonna make a little pencil mark here. And I just really like to hold on to these center lines because once we put this together and we glue it all and sand it and clean it up, we won't know where centers are anymore. I always like to know where they are because we're gonna put the nose on and other things are gonna line up. So I had put this paper, this line drawing was put on here with a, um, a repositionable spray mount. Um, that's what we use to, so I print out the, the line work so I don't have to draw it over and over again and use that and spray mount that onto the board. So now with the repositional spray mount, I can remove this and we have a nice clean surface in here to glue to, which is helpful. These aren't quite, oh, here we go. Sometimes it sticks just a little bit too much. We wanna take off just the paper. We do not want to take off the paper that's part of the foam core, because we're actually relying on that. If I took all that paper off, the foam would crush differently. And sometimes that is a technique. But in this particular one, I want to press this in and make this outer board go uh, it gets stretched out and then this goes into compression in here and those little cuts control this curve So I have a nice clean arc in one axis. That's the goal of this particular process Okay, so now we have these two parts ready to go. I'm just going to draw this center line here And we're going to use that as a guide and We put our formers in there Okay, so these two are ready to go we're good. I'm just gonna bring these center points to the front so I have those. Because when I forget to do that, then all of a sudden I glue everything together and I don't know where anything is. That orientation to me is extremely important to have that. All right, so we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna cut out the other formers. Um, not These are the two ears and that's gonna be part of the nose. We'll do those two later, but we need this curved piece and these two rectangles. This little square here that had been cut out already, that made these pieces for the center of the nose. I was trying to use that material in there. So that has been cut out and I pre-assembled this part of the nose to get this to move along. This is a little bit of a delicate part. Uh, so now we need to cut out this former, the inside and the outside. So I'm just gonna cut this inside part first. So again, it's the same uh, process. I'm gonna plunge cut but this time I'm not gonna cut outside. This is my good part, this part here. I'm gonna throw this part away. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with these edges and I'm not gonna overextend my cut into the good piece. So I'm just gonna keep this, this. So I'm just gonna go for it on here. I'm gonna do these outside arcs. So 
I've done many of these, so I'm very comfortable with doing two passes. If you do three or even four, there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm leaning back. I'm not holding the blade straight up in the air. I'm leaning back and allowing it to cut. It should go very, very easily. No forcing. And you can see I'm keeping my fingers away from the path of the blade, which means, I mean, I could hold this over here. And if I come along and if I get stuck and I slip a little and I have all that energy on the blade, I could slip into my hand because that's right in the direction of the blade. So always try to keep your hand away from the direction of that blade. Okay. So I'm going to cut these straights. Now, since I'm not overcutting, I have a little bit of material here that I did not cut through. So I'm going to comb the back here. It takes a little extra effort, but it keeps the part really nice and clean. Okay, so that part's garbage. We don't need that part. <clears throat> now I can over overextend this cut here because um, it's coming out of the out of the scrap. So by overextending the cut, I don't. I shouldn't have to worry about going onto the back and cutting. But let's see how this is going to work. Okay, I have a look right here. I didn't. It was on the curve. And, oh, one here. Okay, so I'm just checking my part, seeing how that edge, not bad. It's slightly crooked. It's always good. This one's quite crooked here. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a little bit. I'm just going to actually clean that up right now. So all I'm going to do is just cut a little bit, maybe a little more. That bottom piece of material, just keep that nice and square. Okay, that's good. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we need these two pieces. Uh, so these are pretty straightforward. These are just these uh, rectangular pieces. These three pieces we're cutting out now, I'm calling them formers because they're going to go in the inside and they're going to hold our exterior pieces into position. So we can wrap that last piece of cardboard around and everything will stay perfectly square and oriented and curved and all the things that we need to have happen. Okay, so we'll just put that part to the side. We'll come back to that later. So these are the three formers we're going to work with. So you can see I have these center lines. This particular center line here is not significant at this point, but this one is. We want to know the center of this. And you'll see that in a moment when we glue this together. And I'm going to just put it on both sides just so I have it. And then that'll help me orient it. And we glue this together. Okay, so we have that. So again, we just peel off this piece of uh, paper. This one looks like it's stuck on here pretty well. And we can take the paper off of the rectangle. This doesn't have any centers and it's a rectangle. So its orientation will be very apparent. It only goes one way. So we don't need to have any of that centering going on. Let me check how square, yeah, not bad. Yeah, so it's pretty clean. It's good. So I'm just going to bring this to the other. I'm not sure if I even need it on this side. I forget right now. But I'm going to do it anyhow, just so I have it. Because once you start gluing, you start looking around, it's always nice to know where everything is. So the reason that center is here, I'm just going to remind myself where this center is. Yeah, I have it there. So that's the center of the part. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this into position 
just like this. And we're going to hold that with tape. That's the next step that's going to happen here. We're going to have tape and we're going to put that. We're going to glue this. There's my line on the center of that line, not above it and not below it, but right on the center. And when we put it all together, we're going to have that little tick mark that we made as, as a guide. And we're going to make sure that this part, that center line is right on center. So that's the goal there. So what I do is I set up pieces of tape. I kind of pre-tear them so I have them ready. And then I'm actually going to stick this to the back. So I'm going to pull this around and use that to hold this piece into position. Uh, quite often I'll have little, um, little paper towel pieces. I'm going to bring some to the, uh, to, uh, to the workshop just to wipe off your fingers. Sometimes you get glue on your fingers and things like that, and we don't want to get it all over the place. So we'll try to keep this as clean as possible. Uh, just plain Elmer's is good. Uh, it's just a wet glue. Now with wet glue, we have to be careful. If you use a lot of glue, it takes a long time for it to dry. So we try to not to use too much. Uh, if you use too little, then there's not enough in there making the making the pr proper seal. So let's um, let's start with one of these. I'm going to start with this one and put that right on here. So I'm just putting a nice bead. We're having 100% contact on this glue joint, so that should be fine. Just going to spread that slightly. That looks good. So this whole orientation thing is critical. So what, I'm gonna to try to get that right on center. I'm gonna hold it in the middle here with my thumb. And I'm gonna look at over here at this edge and see how this is coming around the corner. So I'm gonna pull this nice and tight right here. And I'm going to pull this piece of tape up and glue it around to the side of this board. I want to make sure I have nice contact right up into that corner there. So let's bring this around the corner here and exactly keep that tick mark on center and line that right up. So all these, I laid these out as accurately as I possibly could. And I made several of them to get this to work. Sometimes things are slightly off. So we have to kind of compensate on, on the fly here. All right, so this is good. So we want the tape to stop here because I am. we are going to glue the other part while that tape is into position. So we don't want the tape to come up and get in the way of, the, of this joint when we go on this side. So that's just a little heads up at this point, trying to keep that nice and clean. So just give this a moment, make sure that's nice and tight in there. That looks good. So we want 100% contact in here and in here. That's critical. So these next two pieces are going to fit right in here. So what's going to happen is this piece is going to line up with that cut edge inside. It's going to run parallel to this cut mark or almost right on to that cut mark. And it should come down to the bottom. So I have a little bit of extra material here. So I think I might have cut this a little too short. Let's see how this side is. All right, so we'll clean that off at the end when it's all set up. So it lines up here. It should come right up to this point up here on this edge and on that edge. So all of that is going to happen at the same time. So I'm going to use a piece of tape in here. I'm going to put this here now, and I'm going to pull that around the corner when I have my uh, piece in there. And then I'm going to use a couple of other pieces. So that, that one's ready to kind of guide me. So this is going to go in here. Let's see if these are the same. I didn't check. They should be. Yes, they are. Okay. So I need to put glue on the on this short side and this tall side. Now some of these seams here are not perfectly lined up, like this one on the bottom here. So I'm just going to add slightly more glue there to kind of fill that in. But then again, not too much. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm going to line this up in all these different directions. I'm making sure I got that right into this 
area here. So to hold that, I'm just going to pull this piece of tape around right now to keep that into position. And I'm going to push this down. And I'm lining it up with one of those perf cuts right here at the bottom. So we can see that that's nice and parallel. We want that to be square. So I'm just squeezing that a little bit. Now I could just sit here and hold this, but I think I'm gonna put a piece of tape like we did last time uh, right here. I'm gonna pull that in pretty tight and then wrap that around this board. Keep that nice and oriented. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then it's the same thing on this side. So that's right up there, looks good. So I'm gonna set up this other little piece of tape in here. Get that oriented and I'm going to put glue on these two surfaces on the um, this long one and then the short one. So I'm going to push this into this part first. Let's get that to line up. So these are all internal glue seams. These will not be seen when the whole part is assembled. So if there's some glue oozing out a little bit or something like that, that should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to do this again here. I'm going to pull that out just a slight bit there. I'm going to pull this up and then wrap that around that side just to keep that as square as possible. I'm just cleaning this up. We don't really have to worry about cleaning up. I just like to see how the joints are lining up. So this assembly is slightly different. I'm just making little adjustments. Gonna pull that out slightly like this. There we go. Get that to line up. Okay. I was gonna go back, and make sure these things line up. So that's that's that assembly there. So we have these three formers. So this curved one obviously is making that curve. These two square ones are nice and square, and they're keeping this perpendicular to that surface. So they're sort of helping each other out. So one of the main principles of all structural elements is your X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, X, Y, and Z. So if you have panels, when you're building something, you have one this way, you have one this way, and then you have one that way in all three axes. If you do that, quite often you'll have a strong structure. We see this all the time, like a basic cardboard box. It's got the sides, it's got the bottom, and it's got a top. So you have panels in all orientations, and that's what makes it strong. So it's kind of a common sense thing that we see all the time. We just got to remember that when we're building things. It's always a good idea to have that. If you don't, then you have to do some compensations. You have to make stronger joints, or you have to have a, an overlap, or something has to happen to get that to work. So with foam core, since we're just gluing these little edges, we always want to have X, Y, and Z orientation at all times. So this is wet now, but we can continue our process, which is great. So we can go into this next one and bring this one around and glue this into position, just like we did the other side. You know, lining everything up, putting that on center, uh, looking at the bottom here. Since I have a little bit of material uh, on this little feet area of the pig, I'm gonna sand that down. So I wanna make sure that when I put this one on here, that I have approximately that little bit of overlap, because I want them to be the same. If I all of a sudden reorient this one so that lines up, it's not going to be oriented with the rest of it. So we have to be really careful of that positioning. So let's hope that works. Yeah, that looks like that'll work. Okay, so the same thing. So we have our center lines all set. And I'm just going to put this dark, darken the center line in so I 
know exactly where that is. And that's right in the center. So I'm just gonna hyperextend that slightly and that should be ready to go. So we'll put glue on this curve and this surface and that surface. And then we'll put this into position and I have some tape ready to hold that down. Actually, I need another piece of tape here. I ran out. I like to have those ready before we do actually do the glue joint. So here's where those other pieces of tape are out of the way, which is great. So I can continue this gluing process. Because after we glue this part on, we're going to need to let this sit and dry for you know, maybe 15 minutes or so. Uh, and during the workshop, I'm going to show some examples of other uh, cardboard structures so we can see the versatility of this technique. Okay, so I have that into position. I'm going to make sure I don't hold it where the glue is. I'm going to start with the center point. I'm going to put that right on here. Let's see what I'm doing. Right on center here. And I didn't set up my tape, but I'll just do that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to pull slightly off there. I'm just going to move that over. Pull that in nice and tight right there. Oh, no, that didn't hold. Got a nice tight seal there. I'm going to bring in another piece of tape here. Trying to make that stay nice and centered. If I do that, then those little feet at the bottom should be equal on both sides, which is going to be important. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I have that extra little space here, so it's probably equal to the other side. So we'll know that that's nice and square. Pull this up, get that to hold. Okay, this piece here, it keeps pulling up. So I might want to put another piece here. I'm just gonna put add another piece onto that. The tape is temporary. It's just to get this to hold. Okay, so I need another piece down here. Just gonna take another bigger piece here to make sure that other part holds. I might bring that around the corner. So this one right here, this one looks actually it's sitting nice and square automatically. So that's good. It's a good sign. I have to force things around. So sometimes if you have to force things around because it's not perfectly square, it's something was slightly off. So that's holding. So I'm looking at all these little joints. Make sure that's holding. So that looks pretty good. Right, where was that problem area? Right here. So what we can do at this point, I'm gonna take a large piece and go from this surface all the way over to this other side. Cause I wanna make sure that's gonna hold. Cause that kept popping off. So that looks good. So I'm looking at all these joints in here. It looks nice and tight. So this looks great. All my center lines are there. So I know that's nice and square because we're gonna wrap a piece of board around this. So if this part is identical to this part and they're perfectly centered right on our former in the middle, then we can almost guarantee that this will sit on here perfectly. Uh, the more accurate, the better. And sometimes it can be slightly off and I've done that myself. I have to kind of make some compensations and uh, adaptations to get that to work. So this looks good. So this is at the stage now. So we're going to let this dry. This is coming off. I want this to pop off. I'm just going to add a piece here. All the way to the other side and not, not rely just on pinching at the middle. So this way I can pull that, make sure that stays. Okay, so this is nice and square. It looks great. I'll clean those little feet off. Okay, so that's going to dry. We'll let that sit. And uh, the next stage. All right, everything is dry. So I removed the tape. 
Uh, so when you pull the tape off, just be very careful to not pull up the board or damage the surface, especially this outside surface. The other parts are inside. Um, so it should be nice and clean, pretty sturdy. So what we want to do is we are going to wrap board. Let me demonstrate with my triangle. We're going to wrap our board around the outside. So I'm just running this triangle on here. So if you think about it, right now we're going to be gluing to these little pointy edges because this curved and we have a nice perpendicular edge. So what we're going to do is just hit that off with sandpaper just slightly. It doesn't have to be perfectly all the way flat, but just to give us a little bit more of a surface to glue to. So we can use the sanding block. Um, I have the uh, 150 sandpaper, which is the lighter sandpaper. So I'm just going to hit this edge off slightly, especially around at the top here, we have nice contact because it's a nice square edge. But as we come around towards the front, we start to lose that surface. So just sand, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And I would keep it on both edges, to keep it nice and square, keep it kind of even. So we're just gonna take a little bit off. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. So we have a little bit of a landing there. <sighs> to glue our situation down here, I'm not sure if we can even get this in here. It's a little bit of an edge there. So I'm just gonna clean the inside of that edge just slightly. We can get that to glue in there just a little better. I mean, these are subtle little nuances. It might not glue perfectly if we don't do this, but it's close. Okay, so that's good. That's clean. Now, I had mentioned uh, my part was a little off here, so these uh, little parts are sticking down here slightly. So I took a quick look at that. I was going to sand that down, but what we do want to do is make sure that this part fits in here. We're going to put this piece in here with glue. And since this is calculated perfectly, it's sitting really, really nice right here. So I'm afraid if I take off that material, this won't sit as nice. So it's okay. So I'm going to glue it just to that protrusion, but it's not going to settle on this edge because that's too low. But that's okay because the other piece that's going to come around is going to have a glue flap that's going to go on top of this. So the two of them glued together will give us a nice bond. So I'm just going to fake that a little. It's a little bit of a judgment call. I'm going to leave that. So I'm not sure why I didn't get that piece to sit there perfectly. So we'll see. So I'm going to glue this into position now. Uh, this is going to be centered right here. There's not much clearance there and there. I'm going to put that right in there. So just put your part in there and check it. Kind of just encourage it. To, we don't want any folds. We want just a nice curved edge. So if you just slightly arc this just a little bit, just to make that want to curve a little bit. When, when you pop that in there, it should sit perfectly. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue and... Um, possibly tape. I've done some of these, right? I sort of held it with my hand to make sure it stayed, uh, but it's both good. I'll tape it so we can, I can show you where the tape should go. All right, so again, we're gonna put some glue. Now this glue will ooze out a little bit, but it's, it is gonna ooze out to the front, to our good surface. So we don't wanna use too much, just enough to get a good bond in there. I'm doing this outside wrap in two pieces and making the overlap down where the feet are, which is at the bottom. So we won't, if there's any uh, unsightly mismatch or something like that, it'll be down at the bottom underneath and it won't be as critical. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, I am going to put a little on here. Maybe I can get that to hold down right there. It's got like little high heels all right, like that. Okay, so now this piece, I think we we'll just try to center this as best you can, and we can move it slightly if it doesn't go in perfect. So slip that in there. I'm feeling side to side, and I'm looking here. That looks nicely centered. So that's perfect. I'm just gonna push this down, and I'm pushing right here and pushing that down. So this should sit there nicely. Just a little bit, pull that in. Okay, so I have it in those four areas, which is where it's gonna pull. So we don't have a glue seam here, but I think we'll be okay. I'm just gonna push down here on the bottom of these little feet areas, make sure that's holding. 
and then press down on that just a little bit. Just, I mean, you could put in a little piece of tape here. Maybe I should, because this is popping up there. It's not holding. Did I put any glue in there? Let me just sneak a little bit in. Looks like there's not enough in there. Because I am going to come around with the other part, so I don't necessarily want to put some tape there yet. I would like that to just hold. Um, okay, so the next piece is this uh, larger one that has the money slot and it has the, uh, the eyes. All right, so this one's a little bit more critical about its positioning. Uh, I have a center line drawn on the part. That center line needs to be exactly in the center of our part because this is a symmetrical part, so there is no orientation. You don't have to orient this either way. It's all perfectly symmetrical. And that's intentional to keep this simple. So we just need to line up that tick mark and the other tick mark with that center line. And that's critical because that'll, make, that'll allow us to have perfect alignment when we come around. So that's very critical. And there's a slight bit of overlap so we can see that mark. You're going to need to take a look at both sides to make sure that works. So what I am suggesting is that we do only half at a time, half being putting glue on here, on this edge, just to the middle and on this side. And we're going to put this down and bring up one half at a time. By doing that, we can ensure that we have perfect positioning if we do it a half at a time. If you do the whole thing at a time, it's a lot to look at. It's a lot of different things. We have to make sure it's taped and it's connected and all that. So if you feel bold and you want to try to do it all one shot, you can. I've done it and it's a little challenging. Um, so it's not a race. So I think I'm going to try to do uh, one half at a time to get this to work. All right, so we're going to bring glue. On the surface, so here's where that angle is going in there. So we can put quite a bit there, quite a bit, not too, too much, but you know, enough. We're gonna get that to touch right there. And then we're gonna do this side here. Like so. <clears throat> This is going to come around. I'm going to wait. I'm going to put that glue on there afterwards. So I just want to make sure I don't touch anything. So we need to hold the part away from the glue. So this is where we need to get this right on center. So we need to come around, take a look at both sides, and get that centered. Once you get that centered, you can hold it right here. You can apply quite a bit of pressure. It's a pretty strong part. So I'm going to hold that right there. And then literally just going to pull this part up. Pressing it nice and tight against the piece. And then up here we have this little bit of this negative curve up here. We're going to make sure we get in there. The key is to take a look at your bond inside to see how that is. Pull that in nice and tight. Now this piece of tape here We'll come right to the surface. You don't want to distort the cardboard too much, but pull it firm enough to get that to sit in there. Because that's the negative curve. That's the part that needs to be pushed inside there. So I'm going to pick this up so we can take a look. Okay, so this is flipping up in the air. We're going to put some glue in there. I'm going to glue that down. I have it nice and square, so it's lined up. Sometimes if it doesn't go in square, it might be slightly off and we can get away with it. But if you can keep this aligned here as much as possible, you'll have a really clean part. What we're looking at is in here. We need to make sure that that is bonded perfectly. And this little negative curve in here, that's the part that wants to pop out. So I have that pushed in there nice and tight. So this is really good, great seal here. It's perfect. Very, very nice, it looks great. Now, if I had glue on the other side, I could have just done this whole thing. So let's just see how square this side is. Okay, this one's glue on the other side. I'm gonna pull this up just slightly. 
It's going to pull the glue up. It's going to try to get some glue inside here. I pulled this up on the top, so I'm just going to get up in there and put some glue back where I pulled it off. Make sure I have enough up here. So over here, I'm pulling this off quite a bit. So let me get some glue in there. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of do this in the air. Make sure that it's a nice bond all the way. I'm kind of pushing and make sure it's, it's making contact. So this looks good. I'm going to pull that in nice and tight. I'm going to let this go here. And I'll straighten that out later. And I'm looking. So I have really nice contact in here, which is great. So right in here is where it wants to pull out. So if I let go a little bit, it gets a little bit of a gap in there. So that's where I want to make sure that that pulls in tightly without distorting this cardboard too much because we can pull it out of shape quite a bit. So right in here in that neck that we need to push into position. And not bad. So it's slightly off square, but we're going to be cutting that whole edge off. So that'll work fine. Just make, keep confirming your, all your edges are nice and tight before you go too far. All right, so we can just pull this up a little bit. And I'm going to, let me see where I am. I'm going to run a bead of glue in here. Like this. And this might ooze out a little bit because it's like a, it's 100% seal here. Okay. So we could probably use a couple of pieces of tape to hold that down. Um, I didn't set any up. So here's an example where I don't have any tape set up. So now I'm going to have to let go and get a couple of pieces just to hold that. So that's quite a lot large. So I'm gonna use several pieces just to pull that down in there and hold that nice. We get these right into position perfectly It'll be nice and clean. So that looks really nice. That seam lines up. So since this is off a little bit, all of that's going to get cut away. So this, that's okay. And sometimes I've done it where this is really quite a bit off. But once you clean it up, uh, you can disguise that it didn't line up. All right. So while this is drying, we can uh, cut out some of the other parts that are left. So let's let that sit for a little longer. So we have these other components in the kit. We have this little uh, piece here, which is gonna make our nose part. And then we have the wrap for that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is cut out the other disc for that to finish this part and glue that on. And then we have the two ears. So again, it's the same kind of free cutting that we're gonna be doing. This can be a little challenging though. This is a relatively small diameter and we have to take our time because it is a perfect curve. So we are going to apply the same approach where I'm gonna do a little plunge cut right into the part. And I'm going to cure to keep this as perpendicular as possible. And follow that curve. And I'm leaning the blade back. So I can kind of drag it through the material. I'm only going through just a little bit. I'm not trying to go too far. And I'm gonna take my time, because it is a circle. So we wanna make sure I stay as accurately as I can in that black line. OK, 
Okay, I just stepped down. So now I'm pressing a little bit harder and I should be going very close to going all the way through to the bottom. Okay, that should be almost it. A little more right here. And there we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. Trying to check for that perpendicularness. Uh, the ears are a little bit of a different approach. It's not a full circle, so we can do each one of these sort of as separate cuts. The circle is sort of one continuous cut. You don't really want to stop. You want to kind of keep that as smooth as possible. Here, I can come to this point and go over and stop. So I could do these as separate cuts. And while I'm in the same orientation, I'm just going to do the other side here. So I'm going to cut out the curves in their entirety. And then I'll probably go back in with the straight edge and cut out that little notch area. Either way is fine. And some people cut out that little notch while it's still in the part. And then you just cut out the curve. So what we can do is just remove this little notch area. Oops. Okay, so those are ready. Um, again, I'm just gonna bring in these center points. I mean, this is a perfect circle, so it's really not that critical that we have uh, all these centers, because a circle's a circle, regardless of how I put it on there. But it's just a good practice in, for in the future. If you ever do anything that's in a regular shape, you know, maybe it's an oval or it has a teardrop shape or something like that, and you want to know where centers are and things like that for orientation. So I just sort of do it anyhow. Let's see if I can get this off. Let me take this paper off. So now I have this nice perfect disc and I am going to glue this into position here. So that sits nice. <clears throat> here the glue. So we have to just run that across the top. this. I'm leaving my center lines exposed so I can see them. Um, I'm going to see that at the when I assemble this whole nose piece. Uh, those will be exposed so we can know where our centers are. Okay. So I'm just going to press that down for a second, get that to hold. Um, and the next step is we are going to take this uh, board and we're going to wrap that around and glue that into position. So let's just make sure this is holding for a second. I mean, you, you could put a little tape on this. But that looks pretty good. I'm just checking for alignment. Let's just see if that's going to hold. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll just let that dry for a second and put that off to the side. So this uh, outer board is going to wrap around. That's a pretty tight radius. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a pencil or a pen, and I'll just sort of run this around and encourage this to curl a little bit. So when we put that into position, it'll want to stay wrapped around, especially at the end here. That's going to want to open up when we try to wrap that around. So I'm just going to make a test. I want to have that halfway over that center, and I'm gonna line it up perfectly with that top edge. I'm gonna hold that, and we're gonna wrap that all the way around and see what kind of fit. Okay, so it's slightly too small. But let's see, if I were to push that into position, I might be able to get that to come around. 
All right, it's slightly off, not bad. So if it's just a little off, what we can do is just remove a little bit of material. Quite often I'll do it right where our centers are, because they're the ones that usually create the most re uh, resistance. But just by moving, you don't need a lot, just by removing a little bit of this material, we can get that outer wrap to come around nice and clean and make that edge hit. So I pre-cut these just for expediency. So it's slightly off. If you're doing something like this on your own, quite often what I'll do is I'll just cut the cardboard a little bit long, wrap it around and actually make a mark and then trim it to fit. So I'm just gonna clean that. So just like by a little bit of that cleaning like that, I should be able to get that to wrap around. Okay, so that looks, there we go, it's perfect. Look at that, it lines right up. Okay, so that'll be good. Got a little flat there. I think I sanded a little bit too much. Let me turn this around and see how this side looks. Okay, I went a little bit too much with the, created like a flat, so I'm not gonna get a perfect seam there. So that should be okay. I'm gonna work with this side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, just need to put glue around these uh, two edges, top and bottom. Down here. And we need to do it on one of these center posts, this center divider, because that's what's going to hold the edge into position. So another thing I can we can do is I quite often will rub, this is such a small little part, I might just sort of rub out that glue a little bit so it's not... so much oozing all over the place, because it is quite a, quite a bit of glue. And then with that paper towel handy, I will take it off of the front surface, not the edge that I'm gluing, but all this here, because it oozed out a little bit and got on that surface. Like I said, we can clean that up a little bit afterwards if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to, let me find the rib that has the glue on it. It's right here. And what I'm gonna do is try to put that into position halfway over that rib. This is a challenge here to hold that into position without getting your finger in the glue there. So now I'm gonna to try to pull, pull this in nice and straight. So I'm pulling quite a bit to get that nice and tight in there. And then that'll get that to wrap on there. Okay. So again, I should have set up a little piece of tape. So let's see if I can do that with the fingers I have left. Where's the edge of the tape? Let's put that down for a second. Okay. So it's a little dirty with the glue, but I'm gonna clean that with water after we're done. So I'm gonna pull that in to make sure that seam is as, as tight as possible. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so this will be this inside part here. We have this additional curve on this flange and that is going to allow us to get a nice connection here on this part. So it's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but it's very close. And then we just sand that slightly to get that to fit, because everything's gonna be a little bit off depending on how you cut that and how you got that to work. So we'll clean that up a little afterwards. Okay, so that's ready. So we'll let that dry. We have our two ears. So now we can go back to our main part and I think we can remove this tape. This should be ready to go. All right, so that came out really well. All right, so the next step is to trim off this board. 
So we're going to use the knife again, but we're going to use the knife in a different way. Uh, we're not pressing down on a surface. We're not going to necessarily hold it like a pen. There are many ways to do this. Uh, my recommendation is to hold it this way with the uh, knife towards you. And what we're going to do is a plunge cut and then sort of almost like uh, you know, peeling an orange or an apple. You kind of use a paring knife and you're kind of pulling it towards you. You can also put it in there and just sort of run along this cut. So I'm going to cut this material. I'm not going to cut it perfectly. See, I have it up in the air. To try to get it perfectly on that edge with the knife, the chances of damaging this surface are going a little bit too far, very likely. I've never been able to do it successfully without damaging it. I like to sand that last bit. So I'm going to put my thumb here. I'm going to have this blade but on the right angle. So you need to, I'm going to pull this towards me. So now I'm cutting with the other part of the knife and I'm leaving a little bit of space on that material. I'm not cutting perfectly to that edge. I'm getting close. It's just about how much sanding. So the closer you get, the less sanding. Now down here at the bottom, I have two materials of thick, two layers of material. So you don't want to cut yourself. You want to just take it nice and easy. So now I'm going to pick this up here and I'm going to hold this firmly and I'm going to just pull back on the blade. And this is going to come up all the way to here to zero because there's not a lot of material here. So I'm going to let that go. And then I'm going to come back down here. Actually, I might just start like this. So how you hold the blade and how you do this is probably lots of ways to do it. You have to do what you feel comfortable doing. Okay. Okay, so I have a little bit of an edge that it can be sanded or we can go back in and work with the knife uh, and get that in closer. All techniques are good. So what you can do, you can go back in and start to shave these down a little bit, get a little closer, so there's less sanding. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't, don't damage that front surface. So that's one way to do that. On this side, I had a couple of high spots here. So I think I'll... Oops, I think I just damaged that top slightly. So I cut into my top just a little bit there. It is only paper. So it's sort of once you go too far, you can't add it back in. So by doing this, there's a little less sanding involved. And paper, uh, the rougher will be a little bit quicker, but it will chew up that edge a little bit. So you have to experiment and see what you feel comfortable doing. Like you could do some rough sanding with the uh, coarser sandpaper, uh, and then maybe try to move to this other paper. Okay, so when we're sanding this, we want to we do not want to damage the surface again. So we're gonna sand, but you're gonna lean back away from the surface and sand just the edge. It is just paper, cardboard. So it will go pretty quickly, relatively quickly. This is the finishing finishing touch. If you make this seam really nice and clean, it, it'll, you'll have a really nice part. And it's a good idea to look at it from different points of view. Sometimes you'll get, catch a 
shadow with the light and you'll be able to see how the material is be being removed. I have, this, I have this gap here. There wasn't enough glue and it didn't pull in. There's a little bit of glue in there, so it's a little open. So I'm gonna fix that now. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna open this up a little with the knife to kind of get in there and get some glue down in there. Clean off the knife before that dries because that was a nice, nice new blade. So I have that in there. So I'm just going to squish that in a little. Push that with my finger. Get that to sit in there. So I'm going to push that so the glue oozes out and I'm going to clean it. <coughs> so I'm just going to pull that in with a piece of tape with the glue in there. So that's it. So these other corners, that was the vulnerable corner. These other ones look really good. That one didn't quite hold. All right, so I would do something like that and then let that sit. Uh, so we'll let that dry for a second and then we'll uh, continue sanding. Okay, so this is clean. I went through and sanded all these edges down on uh, both sides and that little gap I had, I put the glue in there so that dried. So this looks like it's in pretty good shape. All right, so the next thing we have to do is um, put the nose and the ears on. So this, I took the tape off and I cleaned it up a little bit. So the idea with this is I have this nice reverse curve on here to help with the positioning. So if we hung on to the, our center lines here, the idea was this nose would be positioned on that center line. I mean, it can travel on this curve, but I think it's designed to fit best right on that center line. So if you look at it from the side view, it essentially sticks straight off the part. So the idea is to press this in position and get that gap to sit nice and tight. So you're probably gonna have to take it and sand it a little bit. So with the tube sander, we can come in here and you can sand down. Uh, if your cardboard is sticking down below this surface right here a little bit, you could sand to that surface straight down. And keep that nice and clean until you get to that part. And then what you can do is sand away up to these curves, to this side and to this side. There's lots of ways you can do that. You can do it this way. I like looking at it so I can keep it nice and square this way. So as I'm, and I'm actually going like this and I'm sanding, keeping this nice and clean. So as you reduce these high points, these two low points should sit nicely. So you see my little point in there is slightly up. But I'm gonna squish that on a little bit so it's not bad. This one looks pretty good. So I think that's pretty good. So you can play with that a little bit and get that to fit. It's just a little bit of tuning to get that to line up. So with the nose, what we're gonna do, we're gonna glue that right into position. Uh, I just made a couple of little light tick marks, kind of basically to kind of do this by eye. I have the center line across here, which orients that curve. That's why I'm trying to hold on to these centers throughout time. I'm gonna center it so that space here will be the same as that space. And then I'm gonna line it up on center and then kind of push that into position. So if you think about it, we got this curve and we have this flat disc. The only part that's gonna to touch the curve is across on that diameter right there. So the glue would go here. As the glue goes up here, it's not gonna to touch anything because it won't hit the curve. So it's essentially in here. And I kind of put like a little puddle in the middle. I don't wanna to go too far to these edges because it starts to ooze out and then I gotta clean it. So again, it's a little bit of a judgment call and the more glue you use, the longer it's gonna to take to dry. So let's um, put a little on here. So the, the hot spot is here, and then I'm gonna kind of come over to this side a little bit, spread it out, get enough in there. So when I push that on, it'll make contact. All right, so about like this should work. And then I'm, I'm putting the seam, that little seam, I'm putting that towards the bottom. Just sort of, you know, we don't want it, don't need to see it. We don't have to see it. So I have those little pencil marks to center that. I'm just pushing that onto position. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna look at it from this point of view. 
see how that looks. So I'm gonna press that quite a bit and just hold that for a second. Move that over a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty square, sort of eyeing everything up. And so I'm pushing that to see if I can get that to hold nice and tight. Straight across. And then I was gonna put that tangent from this view straight up so it looks like it's coming off of that curve. That was my original intent, and then both ears would, would line up perfectly. But now that I'm seeing that, what you could do, if you want, you could like angle them in a little. So it gives it a little bit more of a natural type of feeling. Like if you angled it in like this and then angled the other one and you could do that. I mean, I'm going to make this straight because that's how I did the other one. I'm going to keep them the same. So I'm going to make mine go straight across like this and put the little glue in there. So either way, let's see how am I doing here? Okay, that nose looks pretty good. I have a little gap there. It's not bad. This, this looks nice and tight right there. I just want to make sure that's going to stay. All right, so I'm going to glue mine in this position like this. Which means I'm going to be on the line and I'm going to make it look like it's tangent to that curve. That like this. Same thing on the other side. I made the little notch in the ear symmetrical, so there is no top or bottom um, to fit that in there. So this will be the same, same place here. Now that I get them both on here, I can probably move them around and get that to orient. I'm just doing this by eye. If you look at it this way, I can see that that looks pretty good. It looks like it's all on one plane. I mean, it's not absolutely necessary. It's just that was just how I did the first one. So I'm just going to keep that consistent. So that looks pretty good. Uh, let's get a little bit of a, get a glue puddle right in there. Okay, so that is it to its completion. Um, there's some details you can do to these. Let me just get this other one out. Uh, you can kind of customize it a little bit. Uh, so I took one of these and uh, painted it. With a nice pink color. This is a, a pre an, an older design, had a little different contour here. It was a little bit different and made a little tail to go on the back, it sort of finishes it off. So a lot of these can be kind of customized uh, depending on how you want to finish it. Okay, so that is that. Uh, thanks for watching.